What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can create an intelligent weather app in Python. And this is going to be exciting because we're going to learn a lot about what we can use Python for and how we can process some data with it. So we're going to be retrieving information from an API and based on that information, we're going to be able to inform ourselves whether we need to bring an umbrella, whether we need to wear a jacket and so on. So this is one of the first steps into using Python for some intelligent preparation. So let's go ahead and play the program. As you can see, all I did is create an argument that requires a city name. And for my example, I'm going to insert Copenhagen, but you can insert any city name you want. And once you run the program, you're going to get a response that's going to give you a forecast for the next five days. So starting on Monday, which is today, it's going to say wear something casual and have a nice day. It's going to give us the weather, the minimum and the maximum, and it's going to give us the overall weather for the day, plus the amount of rain in millimeters. So as you can see for Tuesday, wear a light jacket and remember to bring an umbrella. That's because the weather has some moderate rain up to 30 millimeters. And if it's a clear day, you're going to notice on Saturday, we only have a few clouds, no rain. The minimum will be eight and to 10. It's going to say wear a light jacket and have a nice day. So we're going to be able to edit all of this so you can actually create something that will prepare you for the future. And so you don't have to think so hard when you want to go outside. And you're going to also notice that we're going to be putting all of this into pandas. So we have a lot of raw data we can process. It is going to be using the open weather API. So as you can see here, we are going to be using openweathermap.org. So just type that into your browser. Otherwise I will leave a link in the description. And what you want to do is sign up because we want to use the free API to actually go down and use the five day, three hour forecast and open that doc. And then we'll just be using all of the information that's inside here. So right now, just go ahead and sign up and save your API key in some place that's safe. But once you've done that, go ahead and create a new project. And then we want to go ahead and create a new file. And this is going to be the main.py file. And the first thing we want to do inside here is open up our terminal. And we're going to type in pip install requests. And that's going to be fairly fast because it is a small package. And then we want to go ahead and type in pip install pandas. Perfect. Then we can close our terminal and we can get started with the imports. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and type in import requests, then import date time and import pandas as PD. And finally import calendar. Then we want to go ahead and create a constant, which is called API key. And this will be where you will store your API key. And I'm just going to be using the one I had from earlier. And of course you can try to use this API key. I don't really care, but I recommend you make your own because if enough people use this, then your program will probably not work. So definitely make your own. Otherwise you can of course try copying this one here. And the first thing we're going to do is get started with the helper functions. These functions are going to simplify getting some values and returning some values. So let's get started immediately. I will explain everything as we type it. So the first thing we want to do is create a function called most frequent. And what this is going to do is return the most frequent value that is found in a list. So in here we will type in original list and it's going to return the, the max of the set of original list. And it's going to use a key, which is the original list dot count. So all that does is return the most frequent value found in a list, which means if it has five values of apple and three values of banana, this is going to return the value of apple because that is the most frequent. Then we want to create a function that removes the duplicates in a list. So we'll type in remove duplicates. It's going to take an original list. And to do this, we will create a temporary new list. And we will just type for element in original list. If the element is not in the new list, then we will append the element to the list. And with that being done, we just return the new list. So let's go ahead and test this function. So first we're going to test the most frequent and we're going to make a fake list of apple, apple and banana. And actually we need to 
test it by putting a pair of parentheses here and typing in most frequent. Then we can go ahead and click on run. And that is my mistake because this is supposed to be a list and we can go ahead and click on run again. And it's going to return Apple because Apple's the most present. Then we should also try the remove the duplicates function. And as you can see, we have two apples, but the list that it gives us back is just one apple. So both of our helper functions are working. Now we can move on to the third helper function. So this one's going to be called death preparation, which is going to take a minimum temperature and the amount of rain. And the temporary message is going to be a value, which is going to be an empty string. And the condition message is going to depend on the rain. But if there's no rain, we're just going to type in have a nice day. So inside here, we're going to write all the logic that tells us whether we need to wear a jacket or not. And the first thing we're going to do is check if the min temperature is less than or equal to zero, then it's going to be very cold. So we want to change the temp message to wear a jacket or without that exclamation mark. L if the temperature is more than zero, but less or equal to 10. We still want to wear something that's rather warm. So we'll type in temp message will equal wear a light jacket. And of course you can change this with whatever you want. You just need to insert what you want to happen when the minimum temperature changes to a certain value. And I'll also show you very soon how we can affect the rainfall. Then L if right, we can just copy this, I'm getting tired. So we get that, we paste it under here paste it here. And one more time. So we'll have 10 of these. So here we'll type in 10 and 20. And in cases between 10 and 20, we'll type in wear something casual. Now when it's between 20 and 30, I'm just going to paste in that we should wear something light because it's getting hot. And if the temperature is going to be more than 30, then I'm going to tell myself to go hide in the shade. And of course, I'm basing this off of Scandinavian temperatures. 20 in Scandinavia is crazy hot in other countries that might be winter. But of course, you should go ahead and replace this with what you find comfortable and what you want to be prepared for. Then we're going to go ahead and type in if the rain is more than 5.0, then we're going to change the condition message to remember to bring an umbrella. And this whole function is going to return the temp message plus what they call an ampersand plus the condition message. Now the final thing to do is to go ahead and test this helper function. We're going to type in preparation. The min temperature is going to be five and the rain is going to be set to 10 millimeters. Let's pretend. And we're going to click on run. Ah, of course I have to return this or print it. So you're going to notice it will tell us to wear a light jacket and remember to bring an umbrella. But now let's go ahead and set the rainfall to two and set the temperature to minus five. It's going to tell us to wear a jacket and have a nice day because there's not really any rain and it is really cold. So all of our helper functions work. Now it's time to move on to the main logic, but I'm actually going to be covering this in part two. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to look at it. Otherwise, with that being said, I'll see you guys in part two.